The intent of this video is to discuss the survivability rate of the B-17's tail gun position and conduct an external walk around of the gun station. The tail gunner manned his position in the bomber while kneeling rearward. He was responsible for providing aft facing bomber formation defensive coverage. The tail gunner had several advantages over the other bomber gun stations. First, he was armed with not one, but two Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns. Each gun was capable of firing up to 14 rounds per second. Each gun was belt fed from 500 round ammo boxes. Second, the tail gunner was fairly well armored. His front torso was shielded from projectiles and his siding window pane was ballistic glass. Third, given the gun station's fire coverage zone, the gunner did not need to compensate much for deflection when tracking and firing upon attacking fighter interceptors. This makes the tail gun station very accurate and deadly. Lastly, the tail gunner could more easily egress the airplane in an emergency, given his crew station position relative to his entry bailout door. There were two types of tail configurations adopted by the B-17 bombers, the early Stinger type tail and the later Cheyenne style tail. The B-17 Cheyenne modifications were performed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. The Cheyenne tails provided enhanced gunner visibility, increased the arc travel of the guns, added a window defroster, and introduced an optical reticle gun sight. Around 65% of B-17 tails were the earlier Stinger type. I will focus on the more prevalent stinger type tails. The U.S. Army Air Forces studied the distribution of wounds based on returning bomber crew positions during November 1942 through December 1943. More bombers were destroyed by fighters than ground artillery flak in this period. The data showed that tail gunners and navigators experienced more combat wounds than any of the other crew positions. Bomber historian Kevin Michaels recently processed a more comprehensive database regarding bomber crew survivability for the 95th Bomb Group. His results indicated that tail gunners were about in the middle of the crew station casualty pack. The data compiled showed that waste gunners experienced the most casualties. This is the tail gunner's entry and bailout door. The door can be jettisoned by the gunner pulling on the door's emergency release lever. The tail gunner can move about the cabin, however. The plane's tail wheel articulates into the fuselage and presents a cumbersome obstruction the gunner would need to traverse to move to the waste gun section of the airplane. All of the highlighted tail gunner station fuselage skin panels are fabricated from 032 thick 24ST clad aluminum sheet. This aluminum alloy is equivalent to the modern day 2024 T3 clad. The B-17 skin in this area is as thin as a credit card. The skin panels are lap spliced with a single row of universal head rivets. The gunner's right side window can be opened. All of these windows are plexiglass except for the rear viewing pane which is about two and a half inch thick ballistic glass. All of the tail gunner's armor is designed to stop a standard 30 caliber bullet. For reference, this thick ballistic pane is undergoing installation on a B-29 tail gun station. The red box was added by the museum to protect the gun sight. The machine guns are mechanically linked and harmonized to the 35 mil rad ring sight. The gunner will use the ring sight for ranging, tracking, and accounting for proper deflection. The guns are hand manipulated by the gunner. This station is not powered like the ball, upper, or chin turrets. The tail gunners have an arc travel of 30 degrees right, left, up, and down. The gunner will maintain a 20 inch sight base from his eye to the ring sight. A removable etched deflection window overlay can be adopted by the tail gunner as a navigation aid. The gunner will use his ring bead sight to fix on a ground object and relay the tail drift to the navigator. Flow deflectors are attached to the barrel muzzles. Since the barrels are spaced so close, the back pressure gases of one bullet leaving the muzzle from a barrel can expand and throw off the trajectory of the bullet leaving from the adjacent muzzle. The muzzle flow deflectors will help in expelling expanded gases outboard. The barrels on the ball and upper turrets are far enough apart that they don't need flow deflectors. Below the tail's barrels are the two formation bombing signal lights. The white lens will be illuminated when the bomb bay doors are open. The white light will turn off and the red light will illuminate for 5 seconds for each bomb dropped. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.